Hey guys, Top of the Nun here. I'm going to be showing you today how to configure your Mythic Drops 3.1.0 uh, plugin. I am assuming that you have a completely clean server installation of it, so I'm just going to go ahead and jump right into the config.yml. Alright, so you've got your version field here. Don't mess with it, it's there for your own protection. You've got your debug option, which tells me whether or not you want me to actually throw a lot, bunch of information into your debug.log. It's really useful for me and I'll probably ask you to give it to me if you ever have any issues. Um, MCMMO hooking, uh, basically if you want to hook into MCMMO, make it so that you can record, you can repair with either MCMMO or Mythic Drops, you want to set this to true. Give mobs names determines if mobs that spawn with items get different randomized names. It's really cool looking but I know a lot of people don't like it, so you can leave this to false or set it to true if you want to have um, new, if you want to have mobs with names. Um, if you go to, if you use give all mobs names, all mobs will spawn with names. This requires give mobs names to be true, so if you really want it, you need to set both of these to true. Display mob equipment. Um, this determines if mobs are actually given items when they spawn and then drop them on death or if they just drop items on death. Uh, can mobs pick up equipment? Basically determines if you drop a sword on the ground, if a mob can pick it up. It's really useful for preventing mobs from picking up items and then players losing their items. Blank mob spawn is one of the most confused um, settings in the entire plugin. Basically what it does is if you... Minecraft has this feature where it'll innately add different items to monsters naturally. So it'll add a helmet to a mob, it'll add a chest plate to a mob, blah 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 blah. What this does is it removes all of those items from the mob. So I can start with a clean slate and add items. Skeletons spawn without bow. If this is set to true, skeletons won't even spawn with a bow. If you set this to false, skeletons will spawn with a bow. It's pretty simple. Uh, multi-world, basically if you want mobs to spawn with items in a particular world, put the name of that world here. You want it to be capitalized exactly like it is on your server. Item chance is the old global spawn chance. It's the basic chance for a mob to get an item. All of the other multipliers for that are tested against this. Socket gem chance is the chance that an item that is given to a mob will be a socket gem. Same thing for identity tome chance. If an item is given to a mob, this is the chance that the item will be an identity tome. And again, the same thing for custom items. <coughs> unidentified items. This is the chance that the item that is given will be unidentified. So if you want it, all, every single item that's given to a mob to be unidentified, set unidentified item chance to 1.0. And then all three of these, socket gem chance, identity tome chance, and custom item chance, to zero. If you want all custom items, all of the other three have to be zero. Identity tome chance, if you want identity tomes and nothing else, all three, all the other three have to be zero, and this has to be one. Socket gem chance, same thing. All right, on to components. So if you want mobs to actually spawn with items, set this set creature spawning enabled to true. If you want repairing to work, like punching an anvil with an item to repair it, set repairing enabled to true. If you want socketing to work, so being able, items being able to spawn with sockets and being able to fill those sockets with socket gems, set socketing enabled to true. If you want to be able to have unidentified items actually drop and identity terms actually to drop, then you want to set identifying to true. Distance zones enabled is for a feature that isn't completely done yet, so I'm not going to talk much about that. Um, populating enabled basically lets you have any chests that are spawned into the world upon world generation um, have their contents filled with Mythic Drops items. So it's pretty cool, and it replaces Dungeon Bridge by Nikobit. Um, on to display. If you look at the item name, item display name format, you'll see that it has these two different variables in it, general prefix and item type. There are a bunch of other variables that you can put in that change the way that the item's name is displayed. So you can have things like tier prefix, tier suffix, material prefix, material suffix, a bunch of 
I'm going to put up a list somewhere in the wiki of where to find all of this information soon so that way you guys can actually just look at it and see all of the cool different things you can add. Same thing for tooltip format. It, it changes how the lore of the item is displayed. The lore is the same thing as the item description where you've seen various pictures of like this sword was forged in a star or some other thing like that. So if you want to change how the item's described on itself, then you just want to change the tooltip format. Currently it's set to show the type of the item and the tier of the item, and that's the general default settings. So in my next video I'm going to go ahead and cover the next configuration file, so that way we can have really short videos going into a little bit of detail about each configuration file. So. Um, I will see you guys soon.